Um, we would like to have your opinion about um, what are the main causes of food price volatility. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I think that two of the main causes that we face today in price volatility are the structure of the markets, which is highly concentrated. So you have very few countries which control most of the exports of the basic commodities. And therefore, if something happens in any of these countries, it will automatically create an effect in the supply of the export supply and that will create changes in prices. This, together with the fact that uh, the level of global reserves is extremely low, makes the countries more vulnerable to, to any shock. In addition to that, there has been some policies uh, that have been implemented, like, for example, the biofuel policy, which have linked the energy market to the food market. And therefore, that also opens new transmission of volatility from food to energy, but also potentially from energy to food. And finally, uh, another effect that could be influencing, but still there is a lot of research needed to show the evidence, is the importance of the financial markets and how much the activity in the financial markets has been influencing also uh, the food market and how that can exacerbate increasing prices. Okay, and what do you think um, is the main impact on poor consumers? Sure. When we look at the impacts uh, of price levels, normally that's a direct impact to the consumers because they will have less, they could be able to buy less food with the same amount of money. Now, volatility uh, affects in two ways. One, to the producers, it will affect them, especially if they are credit constrained, because they will have efficiency losses given that they won't know what to expect in terms of prices. So volatility is directly linked to the potential misuse or, or not, a, not optimal use of their inputs and that will affect what they produce and will affect what they sell, and that will put up constraint in, in their liquidity. To the consumers, the effect of volatility goes indirectly uh, through, if I am a, a producer and consumer at the same time, and I have less liquidity, I will have less resources to be able to, to purchase food, and therefore that will affect them uh, indirectly through the income that they generate, especially for the ones which are farmers. For the ones which are not farmers, it will depend a lot on, on the market structure in the region or in the country in the sense that volatility uh, will help for prices sometimes to change positively and to increase and if the market is too concentrated uh, it will be more difficult to see reductions of prices so it will be more sticky to, to go down and therefore they will have to pay for a period of time until the market, market settle higher prices than what they normally would have been paid. You've been talking at this workshop about the relationship between food price volatility and food security so what next? I think that there are several things that we need to look at. Uh, one is first to close the, the gaps of knowledge. Uh, one of the, seems to us, one of the clear gaps that at least I have appreciated from this conference is that on the f uh, relationship with financial markets, still there is no clear consensus of if this is really affecting or not. Uh, there is also lack of, of knowledge of the behavioral change that the changes in prices uh, are, are taking place and how the consumers and the producers are reacting to that. Uh, also, it is important to start to analyze what are the potential policy responses that should happen to minimize any potential problem, especially to poor consumers. Uh, so there has been a lot of interventions happening to, to minimize or to uh, alleviate the potential risk, like transfers, increasing transfers, and so on. But those are just measures to, to resolve the, the photograph, the, the problem in that point of time, but they are not looking at the structural problem. What also has been I think important is that we have seen that uh, there has been some changes in the last years as a result of the 2007 and 2008 crisis, which have changed a little bit the initial structure of markets. We have countries like Brazil and Argentina right now, which are becoming important uh, suppliers of food now. Mm -hmm. So this concentrated market structure that we found in 2007 is also uh, happening, uh, is being reduced now, and we have more players, which is one important component. Uh, and the second element, uh, I think, is there is starting to be more increase in certain supplies. One of the commodities which was pretty tight in 2008 was rice. And rice is a commodity which is very sensitive for poor people, especially Africa and, and, Asia, and Asia. Therefore, today we have a lot better supplies, a more stable supply of rice, which basically reduces this vulnerability uh, of a commodity that is very sensitive. Uh, so I think there is still a lot of work to do. We need to analyze better uh, the policies and to try to understand the the behavioral changes and the dynamics behind each of the contexts. Thank you for this interview.